Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. It's been a while but a brand new DLC is going to drop tomorrow. The devs reached out to see if I wanted to check it out and I must say it looks pretty damn good. This is Execution Force. The brand new DLC brings you some new reinforcements for your Grey Knights in the form of the Officio Assassin Norum. There's actually more to this DLC than just a few new units so we're going to check out everything as always with new content for Chaos Gate demon hunters you can either start a new save or you're more than welcome to play with your current save you do have the option to just turn on the dlcs and if it's been a while since you've played this game keep in mind that there are a bunch of new enemies you can tell obviously that the beast of nurgle who is very adorably there sharing some news is also a new enemy that will appear in this title so we're going to be looking at various points in the game uh, but you're going to be able to get the official assassinorum stuff by around day 60 it doesn't really take that long to actually get there and anytime that you will see anything like a spoiler some story stuff i'll have it clearly marked on the video description so that way you don't have to get spoiled if you don't want to and you'll just get the gameplay stuff if you just want to skip around just like the last dlc i will say it is quite seamless just to add in the new dlc to a current save i will say early on into this video though that you will get a lot more use out of the assassinorum units than you did the dreadnought that's for sure anyways let's continue The fight against the vile heretics takes an interesting turn. Grandmaster Kai may have grown obstinate sitting on Titan, but there are others who recognize the need for action. The Officio Assassinorum has agreed to make available an execution force tasked with exterminating this bloom. The edicts of our chapter demand we work alone, Inquisitor. We are fully capable of handling the threat. Did you not make the case days ago that this strike force is depleted? Are we not allies in this crusade against chaos? <laughs> I suppose chapter doctrine permits the use of outside forces under certain exigent circumstances. Indeed, we all have a duty to elevate need above custom. Now, Commander, which temple would best serve your most immediate needs on the battlefield? Excellent. My savant has many records detailing the efficacy of those from the Vindakar Temple. They are the finest marksmen, and patient beyond reproach. Commander, understand that while the Officio Assassinorum trains the finest operatives in the Imperium, they lack your battle brother's resilience. While you can requisition more assassins, the cost will be high. Each operative has undergone countless genetic and cybernetic enhancements to transform them into the ultimate killers. So around day 62 you'll get a little bit of lore and then you'll be able to start choosing which one you want. You'll get the option out of the four and from there, yeah, you can have a little fun. So the Officio Assassinorum units themselves aren't really that customizable barring, you know, weapons and stuff, but you can't change how they look. You can't change their visuals too much. Which kind of makes sense considering that obviously their units are kind of basic in terms of customization when it comes to the actual miniatures. You get access to four different ones. Right now we're looking at the Vindicar Assassin. This is your sniper unit. It does a lot of damage. I must admit it's probably one of my favorite ones so far. It's very, very important to note that their skill line focuses on their ranks. You get more abilities as you rank them up. They don't have a fleshed out skill tree like the normal knights where you can specialize them in different ways. And I think that kind of works considering that the assassins themselves are more situation focused and elite focused rather than a squad of paladins which you can tailor to what you actually need. Don't worry that you can't customize them too much. Believe me, they are so useful. You're going to be using them a lot during your battles because you don't have to use them just in the new mission types. You can use them throughout your campaign and they will make things a little bit easier for you. When we start looking towards, say, for example, the Eversaw, uh, again different type you can see the abilities you can see that this one does focus a little bit more on melee it is very important to note as you would have seen prior that you only have four assassin slots so that means that you can get one of each you can pick and choose as you recruit which i think is fantastic it's not like the gray knights themselves which is pretty random and kind of annoying because sometimes you just end up with stuff that you just don't want to use i don't like to use the purgators for example the assassin slots are very limited though compared to the gray knights but the assassins are so powerful that it kind of makes sense 
sense. You shouldn't really be able to run a full four-man squad of Vindicar assassins. Don't get me wrong, that sounds absolutely phenomenal, but it would be kind of broken. He'll take some time to get used to the assassins, I'd say, but each of them have their own benefits. I'm very brute force playing. I kind of work on a melee focused stealth build so the assassins have kind of worked quite well terminator squads are still very very fun give them a little bit of long range support and you're pretty much golden what i would suggest is trying out the assassins as soon as you can take them to some easy missions if you can find those as that will probably be the best way for you to be able to explore their capabilities which one is the best one for you obviously it's important to keep in mind that if you have any bonuses to say recruitment that means that you'll also recruit one that is a fairly bit stronger than you would get naturally for example in this clip that i'm showing you the vindicar came in rank one however all the other assassins due to some bonuses have been coming in in rank two which means that they they're always going to be a little bit better. They've got some more abilities, more capabilities. And obviously that means that you have to get less XP for them because you've already got a bunch of it just naturally. Obviously keep in mind that each assassin costs free requisition, which really isn't too expensive, but early on you will notice that. Like later on, it's fine because you'll have enough to spare, but early campaigns can be noticeable. So a good helpful tip here might be just save before you unlock it. This is obviously for newer campaigns, and that means that you can just load your campaign again and try out the other one if you want to try for a mission or two. Honestly, I just wish this game had a skirmish mode and it wasn't just like a big campaign thing. That way you could actually just play around with stuff and see if this unit is worth it or not for you or a certain loadout but hey we can make do with loading and saving you've got that ability and you're able to just play around see exactly what you want and go from there what I will say is that all four assassins are quite unique in their own way, which means that you're going to be able to have different playstyles. So if one doesn't really have too much interest for you, the other one will. This is the great thing about this. Obviously your main forces are your Grey Knights and you can completely ignore the assassins, but I would say that this is a main feature for the DLC, especially when some of them are quite useful. Like for example, having an assassin with a servo skull that can replenish the ammunition and reload the ammunition for one of your Grey Knights if you're going for a heavy shooty build. Not something I do myself as I like to send my paladins in straight melee but I know that people have been experimenting a lot with builds here the great thing about this game is that it's so customizable especially when it comes to your knights okay we've been talking enough about the units now it's time to see them in action so what we're going to do is skip forward a little bit this was a save provided by the developers and we're going to do a tenterous hive mission this is one of the new mission types there's two in total this one is going to focus around basically just destroying the hive. Very similar to what we already have in terms of bloom spawn, but this one's a little bit stronger. So they'll present a little bit more of a challenge for that. You just can't really take knights alone. You can, don't get me wrong, especially if you use a lot of interceptors, uh, but why not have a little bit of fun? Bring in some assassins, bring in some support and see what you can do. This facility has clearly been isolated for some time. Can you enlighten us, Dominus? Nearby seismic activity rendered this facility unfit for usage. It is currently scheduled for refitting in 1,337 days. Then we've no time to waste. Destroy the monstrosity, Commander. So this mission is fairly large because what you need to do is explore through the map and basically take out a target in every location before going for the main one. So as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, there's a bunch of hive germs and then there's the hive proper. You can't damage the hive proper until you get rid of all the germs. And this is going to be one of those missions where you're going to have to either split up or have a very fast moving squad. Here I had everyone together as it was one of my first runs so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't sacrificing my dudes but definitely splitting up my forces would have been a better thing this is a harder mission I must say you're dealing with a lot of enemies a lot of enemies and you're basically just surrounded in all sides the multiple targets are going to require you to be quite mobile. If you have full Terminator squads, that's not going to work for you here. You're going to need to be quick about it. Not so much like the other mission, which I feel is a lot faster, but you're dealing with a lot of damage. The maps are fairly large from what I've seen too. Not like massive large, but big enough to kind of be a bit annoying if you don't have the correct build if you've got a lot of interceptors then you're going to be fine the only problem is obviously you're going to want to have some healing too because 
yeah, you can get overwhelmed. Plus, one of the things that you're going to have to know is that every turn, yeah, you're going to be dealing some damage to you, sometimes even getting plagued and so on. It's just part of the hive mission. And that can get kind of frustrating as you can be quick, but if you don't have an apothecary, a very well kitted out apothecary, you will start to suffer really, really heavily. Enemy reinforcements are limited here, so you're not getting constantly stuff thrown at you, but you will see that things are getting a little bit more hectic. You do have access to assassins that can get rid of uh, warp rifts and so on, but sometimes the rifts will spawn away uh, so far away that you're not really going to be able to actually use your ability as far as I've been able to see. If anything regarding this mission, I wouldn't say it's difficult. I would say it's kind of annoying with the constant fire at you, which you're not really taking damage, but the extra plague all the time is just kind of frustrating and um, it takes a while. We're seeing raw unedited gameplay here and yeah, I feel like this mission could have gone a lot faster if I would have had a better build, but I was using the recommended build that was provided in the save. I feel like going full intercessors would have probably been a lot faster. Just teleporting around would have just made this mission possibly 15 minutes long, maybe even less so, because all you have to do is take out the germs, then take out the hive. There's no extra wait two turns and stuff. It's just be very, very quick. I would suggest taking them in groups of two, however, because it's one of these things where... Yeah, if you're left alone, you could have a lot of focus fire. There is a bunch of enemy squads. Basically, I think that there's a squad per germ and per hive, so they can protect it. It also is important to note that this mission area, this planet, only really had one marker of like infection on it so I'm not too sure how dangerously overpowered the enemy could get how terrifying the squads could be as time progresses if you have one of these missions trigger in an area with three four or possibly even five markers it's definitely always important to keep that in mind because it could just get to the point that you're just not going to be able to fight here the assassins have proven quite well I must say that the assassins here probably not as useful as they were in the other mission which I'll be showcasing in just a small bit. I will say now though that I will complain regarding the uh, Vindicar Assassin, the dead shot which kills any organic creatures in one shot. You don't really have that many organic stuff to fight as far as I've been seeing unless this is a bug. Demons don't really count as organic. Well they're not really organic but you get what I mean right? The shot should just be a shot and that's it. Call it a one-shotter, one use permission and that's it. I mean it's still very good for what it does by itself. The fact is that the Vindicar Assassin can have a really high damage output even with just generic shots despite the fact that it only has two ammo per cartridge but you've got the other assassin there that can actually just reload it for you. Kind of interesting that I like this mission less than the other one which is funny because the next mission is a timed one and I absolutely detest timed missions in most games but I feel like it was just a little bit more fun to play around with. Obviously that will vary depending on the player, so you might like this mission more than the other one. We're all clearly entitled to our own opinion, but I just felt like the constant barrage from something that I couldn't really fight against was a bit of a problem. Because there's only so many uses that you'll get for a medical servo skull or pretty much just anything to heal and purify your characters. And while the plague itself doesn't do that much damage, having it constantly on you can cause a problem, especially if you clear it out and then it's just back on you again. It gets a little bit annoying. But anyways, I'll let the rest of the battle play out if you want to just see how it works, how I started evolving using my assassins and all the rest. And if you want to skip ahead to the next section, obviously timestamps are going to help you out here. They should be live on this video. If not, they will be on the description. Strong, Strong we shall stand. <laughs> I sense a massive spike in warp activity below. It is a warp surge, Inquisitor. Such events are common in pitch battles between psychers. And yet your brothers have clearly restrained their powers. Something foul is at work below. What is your will? With alacrity.
You have been judged. Awaiting directions. Understood. Your orders. Your command? Storm! Gratitude. Calexis. Yes. your service. Taking position. Securing position. Still in prime condition. I sense the enemy converging. What is your will? Steady and surely we hunt them. ready.
gliding through the world. Glory to Zyphos! <laughs> to serve. These wounds will heal. Back in battle condition. Alter trained and ready. Is restored, brother. Weapons ready. Yes, Commander. At once, chaos stirs within the shadows. Ready to fire. Disposal as requested. At your service. Yes. Standing ready.
firing. Ammunition depleted. Moving out. I have something near. Pain is beneath me. That will not delay your doom. <laughs> defenses. Acquiring firing position. Your command? Storm! I am here to serve. Your orders. Gratitude. Yes. Commander. What is your will? Gliding through the wall. Down! Fight. Listening. shall avoid its fate. Weapon empty. Calexis. Vindicare at your disposal. Up next. Yes. Wounds 
My thanks. No demon shall avoid its fate. Moving out. your service. Now, good as you. I'm 
must meditate. Alexis. Awaiting directions. See them fall, brothers? I am here to serve. Kalma! Advancing! Both are trained and ready. I am an instrument of vengeance. survives. In an instant.
my sights. at the hive now commander see them fall brothers vengeance oh! mercy in death yes sir your service. to serve. Vindica at your disposal.
threat is vanquished. Well done, Commander. We will continue to monitor this system for any sign of the Hive's return. Glory to Xiphos! The next type of new mission is the boarding action. So you might remember when playing this before, sometimes you would collide with a Death Guard vessel and usually you had to auto resolve or just like fire at them, but there was no actual mission to it. Now you have access to something called a boarding action, which allows you to actually fight the mission itself. You'll be able to send in a squad of your choosing and you'll be able to just smash your way into the enemy lines, into the actual ship of the Death Guard. This means the auto-resolve feature is finally gone, which is actually quite good considering that you sometimes had more issues. Uh, a lot of you guys would come back very heavily wounded and it was just frustrating because, well, nobody really likes something that you can't really control. So in this mission, we actually have to go in there, do some damage ourselves, which I think can work out quite well. I don't like the squad that's available, so I'm just going to make up my own squad and then I'll see you in the actual battle. Edict's machine spirits recoil at the proximity of this Death God vessel. As do we all, Dominus. Brothers, destroy the cruiser's generators. The Edict will enter a holding pattern while you destroy the power supplies, but we can only delay engagement for so long. Alright, so boarding actions, here we go. You get 10 turns to destroy four different uh, generators. This is simple enough. You can easily split your forces into two. And as you can tell, this mission is a lot smaller than the other one. It's pretty much the same styling though. As soon as you break everything, you can just get teleported out. So you don't have to wait a turn or two, which is kind of beneficial to you as uh, you're going to get swarmed a lot. Unlike the other mission, in this one, the enemy reinforcements are unlimited and they will keep coming for you. This is very much timed and you're going to have to be as quick as possible, just slaughtering your way through and destroying them before you get overwhelmed because what's going to happen is the longer it takes the stronger the enemies are going to arrive early on you're just going to be dealing with the usual stuff you know pox walkers chaos space marines but eventually some blight lord terminators will show up i'm not sure if you're going to start seeing hell brutes and stuff but i have been seeing like the big terminators and they've been doing a lot of damage i will say yeah this mission much more enjoyable it's the risk do you want to meet one of these vessels head on and can you take it out or you can just avoid them. This is what I kind of like about this unless there's too many of them which sometimes in the map it can be a bit of an issue where you will be surrounded but I will say that this is better. I will say that this DLC does add in a lot more. It's definitely better than the actual well you know the whole dreadnought situation where you use the dreadnought like once or twice and that's pretty much it you're going to see a lot more use out of stuff with the assassins. They can join you in other missions. They are very, very good at what they do. As you start leveling them up, they'll be much more beneficial to you. I think that they synergize really, really well with your Grey Knights. The new missions can be fun. The boarding actions much more fun than the Hive missions, at least in my personal opinion. I would say that this is a good step forward for DLC for this game. As much as I did like the Dreadnought, it was just pointless whereas this you see a lot more uses you see a lot more to play around with so i'm quite happy with this this might be something that you guys might be really into especially if you like the whole assassin Orum stuff i know a lot of people love the assassins a lot of people have been memeing that uh, <laughs> they look quite snug in their clothing they're effective on the battlefield that's the most important thing my only complaint really is it would be great to have extra story style dlcs and extra enemies uh we do get enemies constantly we have free updates and so on which is great but i'm kind of getting bored of nurgle this is a bit of an issue where it's the same campaign over and over a campaign pack dlc would be great for the future i mean hell we've got corn demons in the tutorial and then that's the last that we see of them it would be great to start seeing more stuff just to get a little bit of variety a big complaint that i do also have is the fact that they're not showing the dlc price until the launch of the title not a fan of this why are you hiding a price i understand that some companies do this but um yeah i i feel like it's awful it's kind of bad and it's in very bad faith with your fan base especially after and i will be very very honest here the dreadnought dlc being expensive for what it was if the announce is very close to the release like for example as it was for this dlc the price should always be shown because if not people are going to be less incentivized to actually check out stuff and well they will likely not buy 
I don't like getting told the price of something the moment I go buy it. I like to know the price of stuff before I go to buy stuff. I feel like the game is getting better. There's been a lot of patches to improve upon it. It just needs to get a little bit more, I think. There's only so much of the same story that people want to do. The repetitiveness does get a little bit annoying. So having a few other enemies pop in would be great. I'm still excited for the Assassins. I think it's a very good addition. Definitely adds in a little bit more fun gameplay. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. A start of a discussion. And um, yeah, I'll let the rest of the battle play out so you can see how I did. I think I did much better in this mission than I did in the last. And I quite like this new style. It definitely makes the boarding actions uh, feel less annoying. But yeah, have a good day guys and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Your command? The Emperor Reinforcements. Once, Commander. Gratitude.
unleash me. Face! What is your will? within the shadows. your service with alacrity spike in warp activity below. It is a warp surge, Inquisitor. Such events are common in pitch battles between psychers. And yet your brothers have clearly restrained their powers. Something foul is at work below. Oh, Max! Tremble before the 14th Legion! <laughs> Orders. I am his will. I must sanctify my round. is nearly complete.
alas. to serve in an instant they come today we shall be tested what's this the emperor's dogs depleted. Preparing for return to the teleportarium. <laughs> 